In the previous video, I focused on my health and physique transformation as a person doing OMAD for 7 plus years. Building on that, this will address those benefits of the plan I consider the biggest regarding mental health and day-to-day -day living. With this said, like the video if you enjoyed, watch the previous if you haven't already, check whether you'll be interested in what my book offers, subscribe to this channel if you want more content like this and perhaps to my other channel if into alternative forms of spirituality and let's begin. Energy Something greatly emphasized in my content and book is the energy difference this regimen creates. For decades we've been told that having more energy requires eating more frequently. Based on research and first-hand experience, I say this couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, I firmly believe food digestion is one of the most energy-draining processes. Whenever calories are ingested, the body digests and eventually stores them in some shape or form. Essentially inevitable, rather than boosting it, that process significantly lowers energy. Here some keto and carnivore fans might argue this isn't the case when not eating carbs. Disagreeing with them, I object that while those diets don't cause the triggered by junk and poor quality carbs crash, it remains that food always needs processing. And that is unavoidable. High, low or no carb, a meal always sits in the stomach, giving some of a heavy feeling. Adding to that, digestion slows down physical and mental activity, therefore it severely decreases performance. Countless times in the past I felt super determined to do something, yet only 15 minutes after having a meal I no longer wanted to do anything dealing with the inescapable slow-mo effect. Apparently this is why after eating we get sleepy. No, it isn't that we are undisciplined or something like that. It is because the body starts handling the meal and that steals precious energy that can be invested elsewhere. Well known to many, the standard procedure to combat that is by drinking copious amounts of coffee. Based on drinking coffee since third grade, I'd say that besides incredibly ineffective, that consistently elevated my blood pressure and heart rate. Interestingly, I never got such results after I stopped combining coffee with calories, though the types of beans definitely matter. One reason behind this is that by lowering insulin, fasting keeps blood pressure in a healthy range. I'm also saying this regarding the preconceived notion that fasting, particularly the OMAD plan, forces people to rely on caffeine. Well, if that is what you believe, then listen to this. After drinking plenty of it for about 22 years, and by plenty, I mean using an actual IKEA jar instead of a cup and having multiple of those a day the years before quitting, I quit coffee in the summer of 2020. While this deserves a separate post, here I'll only note that I have the exact same amounts of energy doing everything I previously did, including two fasted workouts a day. Sleep Resembling those of downer drugs, the mentioned slow-mo effect isn't entirely bad. In my humble opinion, strategically eating OMAD before bed is the mightiest hack for customizing your sleep regimen according to the person you aspire to be. Plus, you burn stored energy when you're most active. Besides getting you leaner very fast, that is incomparably more efficient for mental and physical performance. Now, about two-thirds of my life I struggled with a massive inability to sustain a proper sleep schedule. As shared in my book, I also changed pretty much all sleep chronotypes while primarily being a quote-unquote dolphin or a quote-unquote night owl. Undoubtedly, my teenage stimulant abuse did play a role, yet doing a so-called healthy fitness diet was supposed to fix that. Instead of doing so, however, it only worsened the issue, making it impossible to fall asleep due to some unbearable hunger and total dissatisfaction. Truth be told, back then I felt much hungrier than when smoking a bag of weed a day. Once I transitioned to doing OMAD before bed, everything changed. By causing me to fall asleep at a reasonable hour, reaching not some calorie number, but the absolute fullness and satiety with my meal allows me to wake up whenever I desire. Also, to get off the bed pretty much right after opening my eyes without any of the soreness, doubts and junk thoughts that annoyed me for years. Actually, I still tweak that shifting my sleep schedule precisely as I want while consistently getting around 90% quality. I started by waking up at 6, then 5 and now, based on preference, it is between 2.30 and 3.30 am, which is several hours before my alarm. Meaning that unlike when going to school, I never ever wake up at the wrong, but only at the most appropriate sleep phases, avoiding the disastrous sleep inertia. And this is the second key to adjusting your sleep habits to your liking. Time. 
One of the numerous disadvantages of the standard American and bodybuilding diets is that they are obscenely time consuming. Going further than it may seem, this has several aspects. Most obvious, the first is the time spent eating every 2-3 to three hours. Somewhat optional if ordering your meals, the second is the time spent buying, cooking and measuring food. Mandatory to me and hopefully you, the third is the time spent teeth cleaning with dental floss, toothpaste and the brush. Fourth is the quality of time when digesting your food in the middle of workouts, tasks and daily life. Doing some calculations, I concluded that those compounding rob about 5 or more hours of my day. By adopting the OMAD plan, I immediately got that time back, realizing how much more I could achieve and be in a day without sacrificing fun or sleep. And this is extremely important because, as we all know, time is our most valuable asset. Willpower and decisions. The conventional wisdom still advocates that staying in shape or merely not being fat depends mainly on willpower and discipline. On the contrary, an increasing number of studies show that willpower is an exceedingly limited resource and the same applies to our number of daily decisions. This means that unlike what is preached by gurus and zealous self-help junkies, you can use only so much willpower and make only so many decisions before running out of those. Once the worst happens, you enter the conditions called willpower depletion and decision fatigue. Somewhat self-explanatory, the first makes simple tasks feel as they are beyond your reach. The second severely handicaps the ability to make decisions. Besides making you feel like garbage and draining energy, that translates into a total inability to think and act. Meaning, you become kinda useless when life demands doing and opting for the right things. When eating traditionally, I lacked any understanding of that, living in the permanent negotiation of what, when and how much I was going to eat. Hence, if not solely, I wasted my daily decisions mainly on nonsense like that. Waking up hungry and eating 6 or more meals a day, I often had symptoms of decision fatigue before lunch. I also constantly fought my body, ineffectually attempting to control hunger through willpower and discipline. Unaware of what was going on, I was beating myself for not getting stuff done and looking the way I looked. I also felt very ashamed of myself, one, because of all that and two, because of some fitness celebrity speculation and misinterpretation of willpower. Another fundamental advantage of the OMAD plan is that it eliminates all this self-torturing, essentially healing the mind and the body. It is a genuine miracle to live life free of all of the mentioned, having your willpower and decisions available for meaningful things like your work, art and family. Now, Socrates says, the unexamined life is not worth living. I ask, can you really examine yours when your mind is permanently preoccupied with eating, food measuring, cravings and fighting them, tracking calories and fitting things in macros, etc. Maybe you can, perhaps all it takes is discipline. As repeated by zealots adoring to rub in people's faces quotes from authors like Jocko Willink, who by the way, as long as I know, seldom eats more than once per day and advocates fasting to his daughter, discipline equals freedom. Well, if the described sickness and food obsession is the kind of discipline that equals freedom, then I want freedom from discipline. Complete liberation from mindless challenges, restrictions, hunger, tracking calories and futile attempts to fight my body. And that is one of the many gifts suppressing my appetite and transitioning to the OMAD plan granted me. So, as mentioned, give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to this channel if into this type of content. Also consider checking my book to find out whether you will be interested in using it. Besides how to build your best physique naturally while getting your basic urges under control, the book has a section on spiritual development, science and drugs place in our society and some important life lessons I learned on my own journey. Thank you for your time. <laughs>